Today what we're going over is why does an air conditioning evaporator coil freeze and also why does a suction line freeze? So we're gonna be going over all the reasons, the different possibilities that could be the problem. There's two main reasons why a coil will freeze. One has to do with the pressure of the refrigerant traveling through the coil and the other has to do with the amount of airflow which is actually the amount of heat that is crossing through the fins of this coil. Let's start with the refrigerant problems first. And so if you are low on refrigerant, then that means you have a leak on your air conditioning system, which may have occurred at a joint or some corrosion point, and that leak is gonna to need to be addressed. But that may not be the only problem. You can't just assume that you're just low on refrigerant because you could have a problem with this restriction device restricting the refrigerant charge too much because this is broken, essentially. But let me just describe this first. So you have high pressure refrigerant entering into this restriction device, also known as a metering device. And then it travels through these distributor tubes into your indoor unit's coil. And so the whole point of this restrictor is to lower the pressure of the high pressure refrigerant. So when you lower the pressure, you're gonna be lowering temperature as well. So that's how refrigerant works. If you lower the pressure, you're gonna lower temperature. If you lower temperature, you're gonna be lowering pressure. And so the job of this indoor unit coil is to be a heat transfer device between the refrigerant traveling through the tubes and the air crossing over the fins of this indoor coil. So if you have a low refrigerant charge and you have liquid refrigerant entering into this metering device, what's gonna happen is this restrictor is gonna lower the pressure too much and your saturated refrigerant, which is a mixture of vapor and liquid refrigerant, it's going to be too low in pressure as it enters the coil and it's going to end up freezing this entire coil. Now, it's not the refrigerant that's freezing. The refrigerant is just below 32 degrees, which is the temperature in which water freezes. So any air that's traveling across this coil gets attracted to that low temperature tube it condenses and then immediately freezes onto that coil. So if you have an R22 system and you're measuring anywhere, as a, say 57 PSI or less on your uh, low side suction pressure, so right at this little port right here, if you're measuring 57 PSI or lower, that means you're below 32 degree saturated refrigerant in the middle of this coil. And so if you had R410A refrigerant and you measured the pressure at your suction line valve and you measured 100 PSI, you're right below 32 degrees. So any running pressure below those two pressures for R22 or R4 tonight is going to make any air, the humidity in the air crossing this coil freeze onto the coil. It's going to eventually turn into a solid block of ice. So that's, that's gonna be the problem. So that's what happens when you have a low refrigerant charge on a system. Now there's another problem that you could have with the refrigerant on a system, and that's at the thermostatic expansion valve. This type of metering device could have uh, a clog in it, or it could be restricted because maybe this little bulb that's attached to this suction line, maybe that has leaked out refrigerant. And so this little bulb has its own refrigerant charge that's connected to this head. It's called a liquid line restriction. And what that means is that this is even when you have the proper refrigerant entering in, it's restricting the refrigerant, like the little pathway, uh, it's restricting it too much. And so you're lowering the pressure too much and the refrigerant is gonna to be too low in pressure, which means it's too low in temperature. And then you're gonna have that same problem, uh, except this time when you have a liquid line restriction problem, really you're gonna notice only the lower part of this quill will freeze because you're gonna notice what we call high, uh, high superheat, and it's going to be melted basically up in this part. So it's only gonna be frozen in the lower parts where your distributor tubes are entering. And so that's a telltale sign of a liquid line restriction. And you could have a clogged strainer screen at the inlet of the TXV, and you could also have what's called a, a liquid line restriction at your filter dryer. And so that could be broken inside or the pre-filter could be clogging the refrigerant from traveling through, causing a pressure drop before the refrigerant even makes it to this thermostatic expansion valve. So you can refer to our uh, quick reference cards in order to determine the difference between a low refrigerant charge and a liquid line restriction. So a low refrigerant charge is 
a high superheat and low subcooling and a liquid line restriction problem is that you have a high superheat and a normal to high subcooling. If you want to learn more about that, make sure to check out some of the articles we have over the website at acservicetech.com. Just look up AC Service Tech article, superheat, AC Service Tech article, subcooling, or check out some of the other videos we have linked down in the description section below. Now, once again, the job of the coil is to be a heat transfer between the refrigerant traveling through and the air crossing it. So you gotta remember that the air contains heat within the building that you're trying to absorb into the refrigerant that's flowing through these tubes. And the refrigerant is then gonna to travel to the outdoor unit where it's going to go through the refrigerant compressor. It's gonna increase in pressure, which then it's gonna increase in temperature, right? It's gonna increase in temperature so high that the temperature of the refrigerant traveling through the outdoor coil is higher than the outdoor air, even if it's a 100 degree day outside. The whole point is that if the air that's traveling across this coil is either too low in temperature or there's not enough air traveling across the evaporator coil, or maybe there's no air traveling across the evaporator coil, that's going to be a problem, right? So the refrigerant is not going to have any heat to absorb. And remember, the job of the refrigerant is to absorb the heat, and then it's going to increase in pressure because of that heat. Well, if there's no heat, it's going to remain low in pressure. The pressure is going to lower, 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 lower because you have low indoor airflow. And maybe that's caused by just a, a dirty filter, which is crazy, right? A dollar filter or maybe a $5 filter being clogged is gonna take down your entire air conditioning system and possibly do damage to your blower motor, to your refrigerant compressor and things like that. So you make sure you always change your filter every say 30 days um, and you want a less restrictive type of air filter, one that allows uh, a, a good amount of air to cross and come into this coil. Now, another problem that you could have is you could have the backside of a slab coil just covered in dust. So if you didn't have a filter in your system, you could have just one side of this coil completely covered in dust and you may have a hard time knowing if that's actually the problem because it may not be in a good visible area in which you can see it. So if you are looking at an indoor evaporator coil, if you were to able to take off this little A plate and look on the underside of this coil, if the air is blowing this way, basically it's blowing across the coil this way, blowing across it this way, it's the underside that's gonna be clogged. So if you could visually inspect that, you know, you can see if that's fully clogged and that would need to be cleaned. Another problem is maybe your blower motor speed is not set properly, so it's not set at the control board. So one of these standard blower motors has a bunch of wires. It has different speeds that can be adjusted at the control board. So maybe you have a low blower speed. And if you wanna learn about that, check out the article we have on adjusting the blower motor speed at our website at acservicetech.com slash articles. Uh, the other thing that could happen is if you have a motor like this, it's a PSC blower motor, you could have, maybe it's just failed, maybe it's bad. And so you can see if the blower a rotor along with the wheel that's attached here, if the wheel is not able to turn, it's seized, maybe there's bad bearings. So if you have no indoor airflow, maybe the blower motor is bad, or maybe it's as simple as just a bad capacitor on one of these standard type of PSC blower motors. And so you can see this one's mushroomed at the top. Sometimes it's visibly uh, failed, but a lot of times with these smaller little capacitors, you have to test the capacitor with a multimeter in order to know if it's bad. If this is bad, the blower motor won't run. Another issue is if you have one of these newer type of blower motors, these ECM blower motors, you could have a bad module. So it could be as simple as a lightning strike or something like that. It could be somebody turning on and off the breaker too much. I know that sounds simple, but it actually could have a problem if this blower motor was running while you're turning the power on and off to the system. And it's just the, these are ultra sensitive to any high or low voltage or electrical uh, voltage spikes. It's going to uh, potentially break the current limiter as well. These uh, blower motor modules could fail just due to a, a dirty filter because this module's job is to drive this, this blower motor at a certain speed. And so this could be the problem. If this blower motor is either ramping up and ramping down and just not able to maintain a good airflow or it's just not turning on at all. If the blower motor is not turning on, it could also be that the indoor control board unit has failed. So if this is communicating with the blower motor module, maybe the control board has failed. And so I have other videos on troubleshooting ECM blower motors and also the control board. And you could just have just the standard type of electrical control board has failed maybe at these high 
current uh, relays that are down here in these black boxes. So it could have failed here. It could just be a bad board, but most likely uh, it's a bad blower motor. You're gonna need to troubleshoot it in order to determine the problem. So to know all the possibilities of what the problem could be, you could have either a low refrigerant charge or you could have a liquid line restriction. The liquid line restriction could be one of two things, right? It could either be the filter dryer or it could be the metering device that's right in front of the indoor coil. So one of those could be clogged causing the extra restriction to occur. That could be the issue. Now, the other thing that could be the problem is low indoor airflow because of a low heat load it's going to cause the coil to lower and lower in temperature because the refrigerant has no heat to absorb, so it can't increase in pressure and can't increase in temperature. So any humidity that's crossing that coil is gonna freeze, and so that could be a blocked or clogged air filter. It could be a clogged evaporator coil. It could be a bad uh, blower speed, like incorrectly set a low blower speed. It could be a bad blower motor. Uh, so if there's no airflow running, it could be either a bad blower motor or it could be a bad control board. So keep all that in mind anytime you're doing troubleshooting on a frozen indoor evaporator coil for an air conditioner. If you want to learn more, make sure to check out the outline of the book over at acservicetech.com slash ac-book. And we also have our physical resources available over at Amazon as well. There's about 1,300 reviews at 4.8 stars over on Amazon. So make sure you, you read up on that. And I hope this video helped. I hope the books have helped and hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.